The last time that we, we saw you on TV was back in uh, 2013. You were doing NASCAR and IndyCar uh, at that time. Uh, since you stepped away, what have you been up to now? <laughs> well, I tried retirement, uh, and I found it highly overrated. Uh, <laughs> I, this may stun a few viewers uh, of your podcast, but I drive a school bus for Brownsburg Community School. And the reason I do it is because uh, it's a way of giving back. I've been very fortunate in my life. Uh, we used to have a motor home, so the driving part of it was very easy. Um, although the bus is a little noisier than my wife and the dog and the cat used to be. Um, but I'll tell you a story. One of my, my former colleagues, and I could tell by the, the tone of their voice, they thought this was beneath me. And I, I said, let, let me ask you a question. I said, how many people do you think we talked to in all those years? And of course, you know, neither one of us died. I said, millions, right? Millions. I said, how many are we responsible for their lives? I said, zero. I said, today, every day for 180 days a year, I climb into a school bus where I have a total between middle school and elementary of about 110 students where their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and grandpa and grandma and all the friends are counting on me to get them to and from school safely. I screw up once, people could die. And I said, I get a tremendous sense of, of satisfaction every day when that last child is off the bus, heading home, and I'm heading back to the barn to park. And... I, and I mean it. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's crazy. Sometimes the kids can drive you nuts with the noise level, but 95% uh, of the time, they are some neat kids. The parents are wonderful to work with. Um, you know, if you communicate with them, uh, they help you out. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and we run into everything. Uh, you know, it's amazing. School bus drivers are expected to be security guards because you got to take care of the kids on the bus. You got to be the, the disciplinarian and keep them in check. You got to be the driver. Um, you also have to be the, the, the person who cleans up the bus. You also got to be the person that cleans up the puke if they get sick. So you hopefully don't have that too often. So you got all these responsibilities. Oh, and oh, you got to remember which kids are ADHD, which ones are autistic, what their symptoms are. Um, I've got a, a one kid who, if he gets a bee sting and I don't get that thing, uh, injected into him, he's going to be in trouble. So, I mean, I never had that responsibility doing play-by-play. -play. I mean, it, all I had to do was entertain folks at home, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And th this this job is, if, if somebody is looking for something in their retirement years that will absolutely change your perspective on a lot of things, try driving a school bus. You're not kidding about the importance. I mean, uh, Marty, uh, my, my school bus driver uh, growing up ran over my dog. No joke. So. Oh. <laughs> well, I haven't run over anybody's dog either. <laughs> That's good. So I have to ask you, Marty, have any of the students or any of the parents recognized you or like, hey, I remember you on TV or how often has that gotten brought up over the years? Sure. It gets less and less as the years go by. Um, but that's all right. I mean, you know, that, that it's like I've, I've, I've always said, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I've actually been amazed at how many people still remember. I just got a nice letter from a young man um, uh, just uh, two days ago. And, um, you know, it's been, what, uh, nine years almost? I mean, nine years in September since I was on the air. So I always thought that 30 days after I was off air, nobody would remember. So, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. And I, I do appreciate it. That's great. That, uh, that is really cool. Uh, Marty, uh, one, one more thing too, uh, I'll, I'll add in. Uh, did I read somewhere that you ran for office recently? Yeah, no, that was two years ago. And, and I got my butt handed to me. <laughs> I, I was the wrong political party <laughs> in Indiana. <laughs> In Indiana, you have to be a Republican. I, I spent, this is, a, this is the best part of this story. Um, I spent all day, election day, uh, 12 hours at the polls, took two breaks. And it got to the point where, you know, people, it, they didn't want to talk. Or, so I finally asked a few of them as the day wore on, I go, do you even know who I'm running against? And everybody answered the same thing. 
it it doesn't matter. And I that's when I knew that one I was in trouble, but also um, our our whole political system's in trouble, and it's evident everywhere because we aren't we aren't voting. I mean, there is nothing statewide or our national politics involved in the office that I was running for county, a county office. And um, I just wanted to get some balance. It was seven Republicans and whatever they want to approve, they approve because there's nobody there to put their hand up and say, wait a minute, is, is this a good idea? But uh, Indiana is very red. I knew I was in trouble when on election night, Indiana was the first state that was called for Trump. And so I'm, I'm, I knew that my chances were down the drain, but I'm, I'm glad I did it. Um, I, I, I wanted to try and make a, a difference and I think everybody should try and make a difference. Um, but the, the, the political climate that we are in right now is such that uh, uh, people don't want to, in fact, I asked somebody, I said, if, if on my card, if you take that, that Democrat off and look at just what I'm proposing, what do you think? Again, it doesn't matter. I, I don't, I don't, I don't vote for Democrats. And I said, this has nothing to do with state or national politics. This is, has to do with your tax money and how it's dispersed. That's all. And I said, right now it's a good old boys club and you don't know where the money's going. And they're handing out tax abatements like it's cotton candy. And, and you know, but that's, you, here's the, the old adage is true. You get the government you deserve. And if people don't go vote, if people don't take the time to look at the issues instead of the personalities, uh, we are in for a lot more trouble down the road than we already are. So. Well, to make light of it, Marty, I'll, I'll tell you this, you running and, and Tyler and I, and our, our political background and history combined, we all have 11% of the vote from, from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you uh, ran for office more than we did, man. We, that's, hey. that's, I know that's a tall order to do anyway. And I'll say this much too. Uh, I can, I'll say this for myself. Maybe I'm speaking for everybody here. I'm going to stay away from bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Is there, is, there a, a, <laughs> is there a little jab in there? Oh, oh uh, <laughs> there might be a video of a, a certain uh, president over the weekend. On a yeah, bicycle. I sort of figured that's where you're going. Uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> hey. I play I play hockey on Sunday nights. You should have seen me go flying through the air with the greatest of ease. I mean, you know, <laughs> just, just because we're older doesn't mean we're old. OK, <laughs> uh, I will tell the viewers, too. We're getting Marty scheduled for the show. What, what were you telling me, Marty? I was like, hey, we taped kind of late on, during the week. Now, what was your response? Give refresh my memory. Uh, I'm st I, I, didn't, I didn't say I was in bed by 930. I, I don't go to bed till 11, 1130. <laughs> you're like, and I'll substitute the word. You're like, shoot, I'm old, but I'm not that old. Yeah, well, yeah, I, 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 I look, I, I just, uh, I stay very active. I'm in the gym six days a week. Uh, I do play hockey every Sunday night. Um, I just finished uh, the the Indy Mini Marathon back in May. Uh, wasn't my best run uh, in a long time, but uh, still finished. So you know, I figure as long as I can run 13 miles and keep doing what I'm doing. You know, that, that keeps me feeling young. I, I just, I refuse to just sit around and veg in front of a TV. Oh, no, no, I feel that. Hey, that's combined between Tyler, Marty, and myself. One marathon run this year. <laughs> that's great. Well, the, be the best thing about the Indy Mini, you get one lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's awesome. So, <laughs> I want to play that golf course someday, Tyler. Oh, yeah. it's a great golf course. Great <laughs> golf course. I still want to jump in uh, Lake Lloyd in Daytona one of these days. Good luck. 